You may never have heard his name before, but he's a prominent figure in Great Falls and Montana history, planting churches across the state, starting hospitals, childcare facilities, and even a college. And as we learn on this episode of We're No Damn Experts, articles of his clothing are being discovered in random people's houses. Best damn podcast, the best damn town. You want to get up, get ready to get down. Welcome to the greatest damn town in Montana, Great Falls. I'm Rebecca Ingham. I'm Shannon Newth. And, and we're, we're No, no Damn, damn experts. experts. I haven't seen you in like a week. I know. It's been a long time. And it feels like we haven't done this for, well, we haven't done this with a guest in a while. Yeah. We're real glad she's here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure our listeners are too, so they don't have to just listen to us. We can still talk about shopping. If this is true. <laughs> but we're not going to today. Coming to- off a two-parter about <laughs> shopping. Yeah. Today, we have in the studio with us a woman who is way better at writing than I will ever be, (laughs) ever. Um, I can't form a sentence when I talk, let alone when I write. It's late in the day. It's fine. (laughs) We've got that first going. She has been highlighted on our blog. Yes. um, Because we like to find smarter people than us Mm -hmm. to write stories sometimes. Yes. Which is super helpful because we can't uh, be experts in a lot of areas. Right. And someone who is a subject matter expert in who we're going to talk about today, Suzanne Waring. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we're See how excited easy that here. is? Yes. I was saying too, I was ashamed that this is, I feel like there's, I've been in Great Falls a while. I feel like I have a pretty good handle on a lot of things, Great Falls. And this is an area that I sadly up until right now don't know much about. So I'm really excited you're here. I'm glad to be here, and uh, Brother Van is always um, someone I like talking about. Yes. Well, good. You're the perfect person for this. We got (laughs) it right. (laughs) So, in general, today, we're going to be talking about Suzanne. We're also going to be talking about Brother Van. So, Mm -hmm. just quickly, high level, who the heck is Brother Van? (laughs) Brother Van's real name was William Wesley Van Orsdale. Oh, that's a big name. That is a big name. And that is a big name. And so when he came to Montana and he gave his first sermon, Mm. someone in the audience said, that handle (laughs) is too long. (laughs) Shorten that up. (laughs) Yeah, We'll we'll do that right away. We'll call you Brother Van. Mm. And he was Brother Van from that, from 1872, uh, from that time forward. (laughs) Now, Suzanne, there's been many people I've met in my life where I've just decided I'm going to change their name. And they haven't always been receptive to that. They don't so, go with it. <laughs> like someone comes up, it's like, hi, my name's Travis. I'm like, nope, you're going to be Steven now. Ooh, and like they're like, uh, no, I'm still going to be Travis. I'm like, well, when I call you Steven, you better answer. Because <laughs> that's the way this world's going to work. Mm. So tell me, um, he must have been okay with the fact of Montana culture to just go, yeah, if you want to call me Brother Van, that's fine. <laughs> I'm guessing that probably uh, the title brother was used in other religious circumstances. Mm. And so he accepted it right away. Okay. Mm. So now, now that we've got that, Suzanne, tell us, tell us why you're an authority. Tell us how long you've been in Great Falls. Tell us a little bit about Mm. yourself. You know, what you like to do, what, uh, what your first date was like. (laughs) (laughs) I don't (laughs) remember all the good stories. Yes. But you are a Great Falls resident. Mm. Yes. Um, I grew up in Southeast Kansas. Okay. Oh, I'm from Good Kansas. Oh, where, where are you from? <laughs> Rebecca loves it when I go on tangents about this. Oh. I'm from the Kansas City area. So the, the city part, but on the Kansas side. Oh, so, okay. yes. My husband's from Overland Park. That's where I'm from. Oh, well, maybe oh. you know each other. Yes, we'll talk We'll talk more. Yes, that is where I'm from. I, went, I lived there through middle school, and then we moved to Haver, Montana, a little town north okay. of here. Yes. Yeah. Well, 
Uh, yes. I you didn't move to Haver from Kansas, did you? No, Okay, that I would be quite, quite the coincidence. I yeah. did not. <laughs> I, actually, I grew up in the very southeast corner of Kansas, mm-hmm. a little tiny town called Stark. Mm. And I grew up on a farm. Mm. And uh, when I was in high school, my parents were... Um, uh, concerned that I wouldn't find a decent job to pay okay. my way through college. <laughs> okay. Well, it sounds like a small town, so yeah. maybe that was a legit concern. Right. <laughs> and so they encouraged me to go to uh, to a resort area and work, and I worked as a waitress, and that's where I met my husband. Oh, wow. Oh. But we got, to, uh, we, you know, we're in the mountains, and we fell in love with the mountains. So when we graduated from college, we said we're going west. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, it so happened that the superintendent of schools was on our campus, and he h- hired us, and we came to Great Falls, Montana in 1967, oh, wow. sight unseen. Oh, my goodness. As yeah. teachers. As teachers. Both of you. Yes. Wow. As teachers. Huh. My husband started out in uh, junior high industrial arts, and I started out English. In English. Uh, <laughs> are you, you know? surprised? Yes, I'm not. <laughs> I am not. I taught at the downtown Paris Gibson School. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, one year, and then I taught at Great Falls High School. Oh, wow. <clears throat> and then my husband was drafted, hmm? ended up going to Vietnam. Uh-huh. We oh, wow. Gone, but we loved it so much. That we wanted to come back to wow. Great Falls. Holy moly. And well, a win for our community to yeah, get you guys well, back. Uh, yeah. We hope so. <laughs> uh, by then, I had a little one, and I didn't work, but he, he did teach at Great Falls High. And then I gradually went back to work and uh, taught at uh, Great Falls College MSU. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, and I had a 30-year career at so professor great. wearing yes wow. yes and, mm. and and my job required that i go ahead and get a master's degree okay. in english <laughs> of course <laughs> of this course. is why she's going to <laughs> always why. be better at yes. writing yes. and forming sentences <laughs> and then um i you got your phd in english <laughs> yeah. no yeah. it was it was in um Adult and higher education. Okay. And so that was at MSU, and the uh, in- master's degree was at the University of Montana. So I get to cheer uh, for everyone. Yeah, that's, that's right. Good. You have a foot that's in both good. camps on that one. Yeah. So we went from Mrs. Waring to Professor Waring to Dr. Waring. Yes. yes. In mm-hmm. that little time frame. <laughs> We should have started sitting here critiquing just the words that are coming out of my mouth. Like, holy crap, what kind of education system does this one grow up in? She's from a small Montana town. (laughs) So now you're somewhat retired and just writing for fun? Well, um, (laughs) about 2002, I'd been at the college for 30 years and decided that I always wanted to write. Mm -hmm. And so I retired to write. And I discovered after I retired that I could hardly write a sentence. (laughs) Well, that's baloney. How does that happen? Because I've seen your blogs. (laughs) I've read your articles in magazines. Well, it it took a while. And um, my first mentor was uh, Eric Newhouse. Do you remember Eric? Mm Mm-hmm. And yeah. he was... <laughs> um, I don't. <laughs> you don't? Oh, okay. He was at the Tribune. Okay, mm-hmm. there we go. And Pulitzer he, Prize he winning journalist. won a Pulitzer Prize. Yeah. And so I was honored mm, to nice. ha- be mentored by him. Wow. And uh, I started out um, doing uh, 50 Plus, which was a little uh, insert that they inserted every three or four months, and I would go out and find senior citizens who were doing fantastic things. Well, that's oh. neat. Yeah, and then I would write about them. And so oh, cool. It, it, was, it was really a lot of fun. And if I missed a single quote or anything, he would, uh, <laughs> he you, would send me a message. You heard about it? Yeah, <laughs> you heard about it. Right. <laughs> so since then, I have been, well, of course, they don't have that at the mm-hmm. Tribune anymore. And so I've written for Signer, um, 
Signature Montana, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Farm 406, oh. Lifestyles. I had two, three articles in Lifestyles. And then I've almost found a home um, with uh, the Montana Senior News. Are you familiar oh, with Oh, yeah, the, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. They have really come along and uh, had a wonderful editor that I worked with and so that's what I have been doing ever since. Please. Plus, I've written uh, a book, four books, <laughs> four? four. I think four or five. You books. think four? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You forget, you know. Forget. You just really you just put one no, away. No, I think I would remember, I would remember like, how many books exactly I wrote, how many books and pages, well, and yeah. It's interesting. You put one away when you get a new one out. Uh -huh. right? So. <laughs> <clears throat> Toss out the doll. You're yeah. right. But the, the last two that have been really a lot of fun, and I think that people coming to Great Falls would enjoy them. One is Montana Pioneers Creating a Community. Hmm. Okay. And it's an, uh, a series of short that you can read just when you get in bed at night. Yeah. Uh, little stories about... Uh, Early pioneers. Hmm. Oh, that sounds neat. <clears throat> like yeah. Ira Myers. Did you know my Ira Myers? Well, no. you know, he is really a fun man, too. I feel like we need a podcast about. episode on all of these things. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> and um, that is available at the museum, both of the museum, the History Museum and uh, the Russell, Russell Museum. Russell, yeah. Okay. <laughs> And then the latest thing I did, and it was a wonderful experience. I uh, talked to a historian one day. I'm on the uh, Historic Preservation Commission. Oh, okay. And oh. he cornered me and he said, you know, I've uh, talked to Paris Gibson. And by the way, Paris Gibson is the founder of Great Falls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've talked to his great grandson, great, great grandson. Yes. And he wants me to write an article about his grandmother, but I don't have time. Would you do it? Oh. And so that interests me, and it was right during the pandemic mm. that we were all at home and trying to uh, get through that yeah. period. And I did the research on the Russell home. Mm. Because Paris, Gibson, Paris Gibson's daughter-in-law was the docent uh -huh. of the cabin for something like 30 years. Oh, my gosh. I did not know that. <clears throat> and the in my goodness. The, yeah. the interesting story about that was she was destitute. And you would think that money huh. passed down uh, from Paris yeah. Gibson, but it really didn't. Yeah. And... Huh. Our, um, her husband made some poor choices. <laughs> As husbands are known to do sometimes. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. And she was destitute. Huh. And so the city uh, actually owned the yeah. cabin. And hmm. that was all the, uh, was the home and the cabin at the time. Okay. And this was like 1928. And... Um, Charlie Russell died in 1926, and his wife Nancy turned that, sold that property yeah. to this city, hmm. and they needed a, a docent or a curator, and so uh, they gave her the job. Did she that get to sense. live in Nancy and Charlie's house? Yes. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Yeah, she lived in their house oh because my gosh. Nancy had moved to California. Okay. And the house was empty. Yeah. And the city owned it. Well, we knew from our podcast about wallpaper at the Charlie Russell house <laughs> <laughs> that um, it became kind of a rental for a number of years. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Huh. And there was a lot of versions of what the interior of that house looked like until Interesting. Um, well, recently. I, yeah. Yeah, yes and no that it was a rental. Uh, first, <laughs> first teller. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First, what happened was that there was an earlier docent, and they fired him. Oh. And that's a whole nother uh, story. Yeah. <laughs> getting so many, they have, like, we just need you back for all of the, like, focus on all these topics. Yeah. Okay. And you were worried about being able to talk yeah. for more than 20 minutes. <laughs> 
And so then uh, Mary Alice uh, Gibson took over, mm. and that was like 1930. Okay. And she was the docent with her daughter-in-law oh. until 1948. And then she was, she started out, she started this new job when she was 67 years old. Good for her. And so she was up into her 80s. And then her daughter-in-law took over. And I believe she was there till 1955. Okay. Wow. And so can you imagine living in an area where... Uh, tourists came all the time, but you hung your clothes on the clothesline. But that's, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, like, excuse I mean, me while my underwear dries. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Hi, those are my panties. Yeah. You want to see some art? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That I would just, be that would be odd. I yeah. just can't imagine. How funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, and just the idea that somebody might want to walk into your house for a tour. Right. That I mean, that's my this. dream. I have often talked about how I want to walk <laughs> around in historic yeah. uh, areas and see these big Actually homes. go into them. Just knock on the door and go, hey, can I have a tour of your house? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would like to. Yeah, I would like to do that, I would too. like to be a community where people yeah. could just do that. So I give it a shot and see. I don't know if I'd want to live in a house where that happens, oh, no. but I'd want to be able to do that. Because you'd have to be prepared all the time. Yeah. That's right. You mm-hmm. would. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, they're not going to want to no see Sunday morning me. <laughs> junk. Yeah, your junk mail out on the counter. Like, no. no. Got to clean that up. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have to interview sh- view Sherry Schmidt. Okay. Have okay. you done that? Sh- the oh, Collins no? Mansion. Oh. Well, the Collins Mansion oh, yeah. was a bed and breakfast for a while. I and love then the she Collins bought Mansion. it. And she, what happens was the people just continued to walk in. Well, I I understand <laughs> that. Um, I would love to just walk in there. We did a murder mystery there. <gasps> like really? a murder mystery dinner like party thing. Oh, Christmas yeah, yeah. party. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love Fun. that. Build. I love that place. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, we need to have her in. So yeah. her name's you Sherry should... Schmidt. I can just give her a call and she'll right. invite me in and I can spend the night. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Uh-huh. She, uh, I have her email address if you okay. need it. Perfect. We'll take you up on that. So, okay. random question. Do you know if it's haunted or not? Because a lot of mansions... The, you mean the, the Charlie Russell house? No. Or, or the, the Collins, Collins mansion. mansion? You'll have to ask her. Oh. <laughs> I Man. don't know the question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't think so, <laughs> but, yeah. you, but you can ask her. All right. All right. So... That was your latest. Your latest book was yes, about that. And, and okay, it's called the C. M. Russell, C. M. Russell Memorial. <laughs> okay, oh, yeah, nice. because it was not a, it was not the C. M. Russell Museum as it mm, is today. Sure, right. It was owned by the city, and in fact, it was owned by the city till, I think it's nineteen ninety two. Okay, and finally the Russell took it over so how did you come across brother van right uh, Right. of course that's a different story (laughs) well i can't imagine how we're gonna get there right yeah (laughs) well you know i was talking about charlie and Mm -hmm. paris gibson and And then and in walks brother van right (laughs) well you know they're all good friends well the whole world is interconnected here so kidding the way i got connected to that was I attend the First United Methodist Church. Okay. And I love to read. Uh-huh. I mean, being an English major, I you love to liked, read. You kind of like it a little bit, at least. Yeah. <laughs> and Are what, there other things you like, Suzanne? Like, yeah. do you go for hikes or oh, maybe yes. you're a pistol shooter at the range? <laughs> no, I don't do that. Oh. <laughs> that would have been the that ultimate. Been fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. I'm a gardener. Oh, okay. That's okay. the other yeah. thing I do. Okay. But, uh, okay, I was at church one mm-hmm. Sunday, and this man was selling uh, these biographies of brother van and this so this book you're holding is not one that you wrote no okay it is it's not, not one of your four publications she read it is she yes no, i did read i would it. hope so in fact yeah. it's in bad shape because you've read so it so much times. yeah she's one of those people who don't just read a book yeah. once <laughs> right do you highlight are there highlights oh, and notes yes. and stuff oh, in definitely. it okay and then uh comments yes so i can okay. find things oh and yes. little tabs all of your tabs which oh, are looking goodness. a little worse for the wear yeah. so you're at church <laughs> this dude walks in he's selling some books he's like hey Hey, you're I, an English so teacher. I, you'll want this. Yeah. Right. So I buy was one. It during the sermon? Yes. No. Just, it get was, your box. Share the piece. And yeah. here's, hi, my name's Ed Smith. I'm selling these yeah. books. God's peace. Solicitation time. Yeah. So, yes, I purchased one. Okay. And 
I tucked it under my arm and was walking out, and um, a lady approached me, and her name was um, Velma Good, and she's been gone for years and years now. So this probably happened about 1992, and she said, did you know that Brother Van lived in the house right outside the window here? And I looked out the window, and you know, I probably had never paid attention mm. to that house yeah. ever. And it sits right in the yard of the church. Hmm. I always thought it was the parsonage. Is it? Well, it was the parsonage. Okay. Uh-huh. <clears throat> it was the parsonage. But and not always? or No, the, it was the parsonage until about 1977, I'm guessing hmm. a year. Okay. And by that time, they were tired of hanging their clothes on the clothesline so everyone could see it. <laughs> well, if, as long fair. as you got it pulled in by yeah. Sunday, no one's going to check out your knickers, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so they bought other houses that became parsonages. Okay. And over the years, this particular house was the crisis center. Mm. Oh. And it also served as a... Um, extra Sunday school because oh, yeah. there wasn't enough room. It also served as the youth center for all the Methodist church kids in Great Falls. But by the time that I became interested in it, it was just being used for rejected items. Oh, and wow. It was dirty storage and closet. it just had, yes, it was mm-hmm. a storage closet. Oh. Had strange things. <laughs> <laughs> Old knickers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really I mean, stuff you're things. not gonna expect. Uh huh. No. Yeah. A whiskey still. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was outside. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Uh-huh. So brother Van lived in this house, yes, but he, he did. did more than just live there, didn't he? Build it. Yeah. Kind of. What happened was um, in 1908. Well, I'll let me go back a little bit. Okay, beyond 198? Yeah. <laughs> Before 198. Okay. There was a man by the name of J.A. Martin, and he was a pastor. Okay. And he had married, and he was a pastor in Livingston, and his wife ha- uh, had a baby, and the wife died, oh. which oh. happened frequently. Yeah, yeah back in the day. But yes, yeah. it did. And, but the baby lived. Hmm. And so here he was, a uh, um, pastor with a baby, and Brother Van felt that he needed a wife. <laughs> ah. So he started looking around for a wife for Brother J.A. Oh, Martin. <laughs> and there was a family in Fort Benton by the name of Lewis, and a young woman who was played the piano, very talented, and... He, Brother Van, decided that she was the perfect person for <laughs> for J. A. Martin. Oh my goodness! Well, so he should have started a matchmaking yeah. service. Oh, as I well. think yeah. he did that a lot. <laughs> he just had that intuition, yeah. you know, Brother yeah. Van did. <laughs> and so he sent the two of them. She is a pianist, and he is a pastor. On a revival trip. Oh, great idea. <laughs> yeah. And so when they came back, they wanted to get married. <laughs> oh, he's like, it worked. <laughs> that was right. I knew it. <laughs> Except that her parents said, no, <gasps> oh, no way. You're not going to marry. Is yeah. it because he had already been married and had a kid? Well, maybe. But uh, the word on the street is that they felt that he wouldn't make enough money for oh. his daughter. Oh. Well, yeah. yes, pastors aren't in it for the money. No, so, no. no that's true. Yeah. So he uh, went off to Dillon, and they broke up. Oh, sad. But it lasted about 10 months, and then they started writing each other, and Ooh. then they, they got them married. And, uh, she said, love is stronger than any money. I'll <laughs> yeah. be poor with or you. Or mom and dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Stronger than mom and dad, yeah. <laughs> so he felt, Brother Van felt partial toward this young couple, and this, he was the district superintendent and was able to send them to Great Falls. And Great Falls was a thriving community, yeah. and and the church was very active, and they had uh, a fairly r- brand new sanctuary. It was built in 1903. 
and uh, everything was going really well. So he, Brother Van, which is kind of unusual for Brother Van because having never married, he wasn't very tuned in to parsonage. Mm. I mean, he, he didn't care where they lived. <laughs> in fact, I'll tell you a story here about that. <laughs> oh, I'm Perfect. excited about that. <laughs> Uh, but he did tell J.A. Martin, you know, talk to your congregation. I think you need a new parsonage. Mm. And so they started a new parsonage in 1908. It was finished in January of 1910. We have a picture of it right when it was finished. Mm. And it served as the parsonage. And then what J.A. Martin did was turned around and said, Brother Van, you are going to come and live with us oh, oh yes. i thought you were gonna say he was gonna try to be matchmaker for brother van now <laughs> no no no, no I, I, you know uh brother van did have uh, a lady he was engaged to oh. and she died of tuberculosis oh my goodness. she never he, he never married again mm. the mm. story is that he was going to get married as soon as he retired and his girlfriend was Leafy Regal. Don't you say that again? Oh my gosh, that's I love that name. Leaf. If I'd had a daughter, I would. <laughs> that's what you Leafy. 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 L e a f y was her Leafy. first name. Leafy, Leafy Regal. Regal. And oh, that's I love a memorable this name. name. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she was from. She lived up by Chinook. Oh huh. well, Highline girl. We <laughs> love them Highline <laughs> yeah, girls. That's right. <laughs> um, so Brother Van was engaged. His first uh, fiance dies of tuberculosis. Right. And then he's like, well, I can't love again. But then he's like, eh, I'm I getting retired. retired. I might have someone to spend my company with. And and this is the time he's dating Leafy Regal. That's right. Okay. Oh. You got it. You well, got see? it. See, we can follow. <laughs> he, he had... Uh, y- he had worked with her a great deal. Oh. He was a terrible speller. Oh. And and he had <laughs> Wait, lots join of, the group, <laughs> Brother Van. <laughs> lots of communications to Could do. Could he spell her name? I I don't know. Okay. We hope so. Yeah. And it's uh, probably Darlin. That's uh, <laughs> so he would spend a lot of time at their house in, in Chinook uh-huh. and uh, she would be his secretary. Oh so sneaky, it, sneaky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in fact when he had his stroke oh. in oh. December of um, 1919, he was at their house, oh. His, oh, her good parents' deal. home, and uh, they got him on a train and brought him into Great Falls, and he um, lingered for weeks hmm. and then died on uh, December 19th, 1919. Oh, good wow. Lord. Yeah, mm. and she was beside herself. Oh. And one time we interviewed her... Well, it was uh, it was it was J. A. Martin's daughter, um, and she and he could tell us how she reacted when he died. I mean, uh-huh. he had he hadn't told anybody else, but he had told her they would get married. Aww. So we only have her word her, yeah. that they were going to get married. Yeah. But he had such a connection with the. It, you know, they didn't really have psychology then. Sure. No. But he had a very charismatic personality, and all the women loved him. <laughs> <laughs> so he had his pick of the ladies. And huh? so, you know, he didn't want yeah. to say, well, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm getting married. I'm nailing myself down to this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm really waiting until I retire to yeah. get married, which yeah. I think is just a foreign... I'll hold off all the ladies yeah. until yeah. then, please. Right. But yeah. please <laughs> bring me biscuits and bread and yeah. cookies and mm-hmm. do my laundry for me if you'd like. Right. right. Little playboy. <laughs> <laughs> Brother fan. <Pam. laughs> so he's um he's living with AJ and his wife. Uh-huh. Does Brother Van know that you can just date women without having to give them jobs like i'm assuming <laughs> like he's setting aj up with a pianist he's like oh she'll be the new church yeah. organist uh-huh. and yeah. then then i'll get myself a secretary i'll get leafy and, here and yeah. she can be my secretary no you yeah. just go out on a date you don't have to hire all the women you can just go well, I, you know he didn't grab coffee and some tea <laughs> he didn't have to go on dates yeah. he found the women at the churches <laughs> yeah that's that, that's why some yeah, people go yeah. gig. <laughs> But Brother Van did a lot for Montana, mm. and we are still 
reaping the rewards of that today mm. because he started 50 churches. Holy moly. Yeah, wow. 50 different churches. Are they all the same denomination? Yes, they are. But he had lots of friends across the board, not mm. just Methodist. But, yeah. but he did. Uh, and so... Are there, there's almost a Methodist church in all, every little community. Yeah, it, and because of him. Because of him. Is yeah. it now? Are these in all fact, in Montana? The fifty? Uh, yeah, yes. Oh, I wow. think there might be. That's one uh, for nearly every county. Yeah, a Methodist church in is it Lehigh, Utah? Uh, yeah, uh, mm. Idaho. Mm. I think it's okay. Lehigh. Somewhere not but, in Montana. Uh, yeah, you're from. <laughs> and we don't care. You're from Haver, right? Yeah, the Methodist Church is called the Van Orsdale Methodist Church. Oh, well, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And now that's, I'm making these connections. Names. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, brother Van. Yeah. That's right. Okay. So he, uh, yes, fifty churches. Um, he started um, Rocky Mountain College. Oh. Uh, in Billings. What? He did. Yes, he did. But oh. it's way back. And it first was called Montana Wesleyan. And it was uh -huh. in Helena. And in 1935, they had a terrible uh, earthquake. Oh, and yeah. so a lot of the buildings were destroyed. And actually, the students had to come to Great Falls. And they used oh. the Methodist Church and the Baptist Church. Uh, to finish out the year. And oh, wow. then the Poly Institute in Billings was struggling too, and so they combined hmm. oh. until, I don't know, 1950 some. You could graduate from the Methodist uh, Rocky Mountain or the. The other, the Baptist Rocky Mountain, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever the other I, I, one, I they it, didn't win. I think it's UCC, maybe. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. I'm I'm not certain about that. So he started a college. Wow. Um, and the reason for that is that if if people in Montana wanted at that time wanted their children to go to college, they had to send them away. Mm -hmm. That was before our state colleges opened oh. up. And so it, it there was a definite need. Yeah. So was Rocky Mountain, what is now Rocky Mountain College, the Battling Bears, um, <laughs> shout out to them. Were they the first four-year higher education institution in the state? No, by, by that time there were others. There was a Presbyterian college in um, Deer Lodge, I believe. Mm. And uh, there were other struggling church schools. Mm. And then about that time, they started MSU and the University okay. of Montana. Right. And then the other thing that he started was hospitals. Oh, wow. And no wonder he, you said he had such a big impact. Yes. My goodness. He, he started seven hospitals. Oh, tell wow. me, just tell me how <laughs> a dude who's a pa pre pre a preacher, father, priest, whatever they are in the Methodist religion, um, go from setting people up to be uh, <laughs> married and travel in the countryside starting churches that all seems like within their umbrella to say and let's do um uh, an education system and then health care like mm -hmm. what he just had the he just saw the need he had the interest he's like i'm bored uh well, leafy's passed away and now <laughs> it, it was rather interesting um the methodist church is set up so that you know, there are annual conferences and people meet. And so he would see a need and he would bring it up at these conferences. And these oh. pastors would say, oh, we can't afford it because mm. frequently it was it was them that who financed a lot of these mm -hmm. things. And he would say, how can we not do this? Mm. And he had, frequently he had no way, he didn't have a plan, he just said we should do it, and he would work toward it, and mm. he would accomplish it. Wow. So the hospital here in Great Falls, the hospital in Bozeman, the hospital in Billings, uh, Hever, mm -hmm. um, I believe uh, one in the east, and I can't remember if it's Glendive 
or Sydney, but one there, mm-hmm. and also in Butte. And some of those hospitals still exist today. Benefice wow. is one of them. Yeah. Wow. My goodness. And just till recently, uh, Bozeman was still called mm. the Deaconess Hospital. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. what he did was he brought in these uh, qualified nurses, and they ran these hospitals. Mm-hmm. And there was one famous lady by the name of Augusta Eris who was mm. just I should come back and talk about Augusta Eris. <laughs> I love the name. Yes, that Leafy there's Regal, a lot of Augusta, Augusta Eris. Yeah, yes. those are some great names. She was. She ran the uh, Deaconess Hospital for over thirty years during the Depression. Oh my goodness! Oh wow! And I love a story about her. She had ten safety pins, and she kept them in the safe. <laughs> and when she needed one, she wrote down where that was. Oh my gosh! And then she would retrieve it. Wow! Yeah, the, and that is how That's meticulous the, uh, a hospital that was really in debt, mm-hmm. so in debt that people wouldn't do business with it any longer, got out of debt. Oh wow! Yeah, micromanagement. Been track of those pa- safety, safety pins. pins. Yeah. Right. And Brother Van is the person who brought her here. Mm. She was a nurse f- from in Canada and, oh. and moved here. I'm sure he fancied her as uh-huh. well. <laughs> Just before his retirement. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, I can't do anything about it, but I'll give you a I'll job. I'll give you a job. Yeah. <laughs> you just yeah. stay connected to me. <laughs> she, I, I know people who knew her, mm. and she was quite a lady and the the board bought and built a cabin for her oh what on, yes they did she, i have new aspirations for, for my job so the, <laughs> at a board meeting tomorrow you can present that yes yeah. it was down in nyhart and it still oh. exists wow and i got to tour it Neat. oh wow it was fantastic who owns it now um do you remember, well, you haven't been here long enough. The, do you remember the Spencers uh, that had the the clothing store? Wonderful clothes. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Professional no. clothes. Hmm. I used no. to go in there and buy from yeah. them. Well, the Spencers owned that. that family. Spencer okay. family. Huh. Yeah, and they had bought it from... Uh, Augusta? Yeah, I'm trying to th- remember how that all worked. But, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, wow. That family, Yes. I just, I just want to learn a little bit more about how Augusta got her board to build her cabin yeah. in my heart. <laughs> like, let's get to the nitty gritty of this. How'd she make that happen? Yeah. I am in love with this woman now. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I read about her, I was in love with her. Too. Yeah. How yeah. can you not? Yeah. Someone yeah. who pulls that That's magic. Impressive. She was yeah. a fantastic woman. Yeah. Really, really, really. And <laughs> when, when you think that in the 1920s, women didn't have right. a lot of opportunities. Mm-hmm. And yeah, especially in that time that they got, <laughs> she you know, got brother a cabin Ann. out of that. Yeah. And <laughs> there she was, you know, she was running a big hospital and that's the one here in great falls yes okay. it, and the building of course is on ah. 6th avenue north and about 18th street and uh, i think they're making it into apartments aren't they now oh is that what was the roosevelt school no no oh, no we're talking no. about a different it one. was uh, across from it is a, a retirement home that they have built oh. and the fun thing about that is that the building that was bef- there before was built as a nurse's um, residential home. Oh. And the way the, uh, the saloon keepers in the area <laughs> decided that Brother Van needed some money. And I can't remember if it was for The re- saloons decided this? That's right. The tavern keepers. Nice. I, <laughs> and I'm they, liking this guy more and more. I don't know how... <laughs> he's charming. He's yes. a charming fella. He and, didn't get a cabin built for him, but no. he's a charming fella. But he got money from saloons. That's I pretty know. good. Yeah. And he could have done with it whatever he wanted, mm-hmm. but he gave it to the hospital and that's where they were able to build the nurse's residence. Okay. Was at um, across <laughs> the street from, from what, the hospital. What is it now? 
they, they tore that building down. Oh, okay. And oh, this is why a, they don't know what there's it is. There's a okay. long, uh, long care center there, and I can't oh, okay. remember the name of it. And then it's quite across the health care corridor there. Yeah. Though. And the building that is there, she started out with a really small building, and then she ran two capital campaigns, and they built that huge building, I think, in 1929, right after the crash came. Okay. But she had on her board, let's go back to J.A. Martin, and he was the guy who would get into his buggy (laughs) and go out and find ranchers and say, you know, when you need a hospital, is Uh it going to be there? And so they raised money wow. for that hospital. Those are pretty forward-thinking people that yes. got together here. Yes. Wow. And that was Augusta Aris. That's right. Okay. A-R-I-S-S. Yep. Wow. I want to learn more about her. So who yeah. else did Brother Van bring into the city? <laughs> yeah. So he, yeah, he started the churches. He built the hospitals. Right. And the other thing he started was a children's home. Oh. He loved children. And when he would go out and visit people, and people were poor, and people were ill, and they were dying, they would say to him, take my children. Oh. And and he couldn't do it. Yeah. And so, yes, it's Can you sad. imagine how many children you just accumulate? You well, just suddenly have 20 well, children. Well, I've got 20 yeah. children now. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So he started the first children's home oh between uh, Spokane and Minneapolis. Oh, my God. Oh, and it really? was filled immediately. Yeah. And it, I've never heard, you know, there's so many boarding schools, you hear mm. negative things. Yeah. I've never heard anything negative, and that school is still there, but it's used for specific children with disabilities okay. now. Okay, yeah. But the Methodist Church and the Presbyterian Church both oh. s- help support that huh. that school today, and it's not in the same building, of okay. course. Okay, yeah. yeah. Wow. So it wasn't really an orphanage but like a education academy where you lived in and learned and right. never got to go home yeah i'm i'm not too sure if you could say it wasn't an orphanage because it oh. was a lot like the ursuline academy oh. okay yeah. it was a place they could go after they lost their if family. they had yeah they had mm. no family at yeah. that particular time yeah there were people children who would come and stay for a year or something mm. and mom and dad could come and get them or whatever yeah at that time huh. yeah nice little right. repository system <laughs> yeah well, I mean, you know you think of it though it's a good thing to have because mm-hmm. there's some people who are like eh, this is not what i signed up for no i right. need some help yeah right and um you know we hear all the bad sad news in the right. world today if there was just a place that would take care of your kid until you got back on track right or you know a- and it was a good environment yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and whenever he went to visit apparently they ate downstairs and he would stand at the top of the stairs and he would start singing Ooh. and the kids loved it and they would start singing with him and Aww. they would know that he was coming to meet them that's neat and when he passed away he he wanted he wanted his funeral to be in Great Falls, okay, and because that was his home. Mm-hmm. But he wanted to be buried in Helena near the children. Oh, and wow. so he was buried there, and it was, it was December and it was cold, but the mm-hmm. children went out and stood around the grave and sang. Oh my gosh, oh, because, oh, that's but so nice. He yeah. was so popular across the state that somebody sent him a letter one time and addressed it brother van montana and it got and it to just him. got to him <laughs> <laughs> to you're him. at that level of popularity <laughs> That's right. yeah. everybody oh knew goodness. him everyone yeah. was and another thing he would do is um he remembered everybody's name but mm. really he didn't remember everybody's name so he had tricks like he'd say to the person yes i know your last name is johnson but what's your first name? Well, they would be so thrilled 
that they remember he remembered their last name was Johnson. That feels harder to remember than a first name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can go with Johnson Smith Jones. You're yeah, gonna be you're, pretty good. You're, 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 that's pretty good covered. odds with that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's funny. And he was so popular that whenever he wanted to talk to the governor and was in Helena, he would just drop in. He didn't have to have an appointment. Wow. Huh? And the governor would invite him to go to lunch. So that the governor could be seen on the street. Oh my gosh, with this popular. With Brother Van. Yeah. Oh my yeah, gosh. But he was more popular than the governor was. Wow. And when he died, he was the only civilian that the flag was flown at half mass for. Oh. So, I mean, he. Goodness. Not o- <laughs> only um, was popular in Great Falls. Yeah. But he was known throughout the state and loved by lots of people. Which is impressive, too, because, you know, this day and age, we're like, well, of course, you know, I know who's popular in Phoenix or whatever because of social media and just the reach. But in those days, I mean, that that took a yeah. lot to be well known. Yes. In multiple communities. Start 50 churches across yeah. the state. And I think hospitals. people will know who you are. Yeah. I, I have a fun story to tell. Yes, please. <laughs> you seem to be full of them. Yes, I love it. <laughs> I am. I could go on a long time. But one time, every summer, they would have a picnic at the Maddox Church. Now, does that name sound familiar to you? Well, mm-hmm. it was down Maddox in the... Maddox Roofing Company. That's all I got. <laughs> okay. Down in the Bear Paws south of ha- okay. uh, of Haver. Okay. And one summer, everybody was ready for the picnic, and they had a terrible storm, and the rain just rained and rained and rained. So they were going to have a sing-along and a, and a little service afterwards. And this community had started a telephone system by oh. hooking the line to the fence post. Okay. Oh. And they had their telephone system and a party line and all of that. Yeah. So uh, Brother Van goes to one of the houses and rings up the uh, rings up the so that everybody will get online and he <laughs> says, Okay, we're gonna have our service. Take your yeah. <laughs> and so everybody joined me in yeah. and singing and so they had their service over their telephone it's the first oh, wow. virtual uh, virtual meeting. service yeah yes. uh-huh yes wow <laughs> he's he's uh on the uh early adopter of technology right that's right the early Little zoom meeting mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> In 2020, all church that services would, were going to be, be like done that, right? on Zoom yeah. or Facebook Live. Or... But Brother Van was ahead of there his he time. Yes, he was in many ways. How? Uh, so sorry. Oh, go ahead. Oh, well, I was just. Where did he? Where was he originally from? Again, he was originally from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Oh, oh wow. Okay, and his mother and father both passed away before he was like. 12 years old. Oh my goodness. But he had an aunt that lived there on the farm and several brothers and sisters. But what is interesting about that was when he was 15 years old, and of course he and his friends had uh, hunted, you know, in the right. the hills and valleys mm-hmm. of the area. They he and a friend sat up on a ridge and watched the Gettysburg Battle <gasps> in the Civil War. Oh my gosh. Yes. And at fifteen? Yes, at fifteen. How was he not fighting like, Yeah, how was he not Here's a uniform yeah. and a gun. Figure yeah. it out. And uh, you know, I don't know. I guess they didn't take him. <laughs> but <laughs> it was interesting that that Sunday morning, instead of the sermon, the pastor had a blackboard and he drew out how that battle was going to take place. Huh. Huh. And so I don't know if he was authentic or not, but that's yeah. what he did. Huh. Then you might remember the Union won that battle. And then about. Yeah, Shannon. <laughs> you remember? I do now. Yes. Oh, uh-huh. okay. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the refresh. All right. Yes. Uh, several weeks later, um, they had a big ceremony because at the graveyard mm. where the soldiers had died and yeah. were buried and um 
Abraham Lincoln rode the train out and yeah. gave an address, and that's called the Gettysburg Address. Yes, yes. That you that. You all that learned yes. when you were in eighth grade. <laughs> yes. Four score since seven yes. years ago. <laughs> I remember the Gettysburg Address. Yeah. Yes. I did not remember the Union one. I mean, <laughs> so makes brother, sense now. Yes. <laughs> If you remember the outcome, yeah, <laughs> the war. Brother Van attended that oh, ceremony, wow. and there is one newspaper picture, and of the memorabilia that we found of Brother Van's at the church was a, um, a paperweight that had this picture in it. Oh, cool! And that yeah, and after he after he came to Montana. People were vitally interested in hmm. the Civil War. Yeah. Because it was not, you know, it was uh, 1880 and the war was in 1865. And hmm. so they were all vitally interested. So he came out with his 20s. He, then came, when he in came in 1872. Okay. It came on a steamboat up the, up the river, oh, the yeah. far west. Yeah. And so when a church wanted to raise money, they would invite him to come and they would put out these flyers about um, uh, what a boy saw at Gettysburg. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and they would charge a dime. Yeah. And all these people would come to hear him talk about the battle. Wow. And about seeing Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I could understand why that would be fascinating to hear from somebody. And when in the very beginning, it was interesting that in Montana, there would be Methodist church, n churches that were North Mont Methodist churches, oh. and there were churches that were South oh. in Montana. In Montana. Huh. I remember Townsend was that way. Really? And, yeah. And... Um, <laughs> Huh. And well, the church story, were, yeah. <laughs> in each the, one, the the um, the churches stayed divided until I think it was nineteen thirty something. Wow! And then they combined. Okay. And now they're about to fall apart again. Yeah. But, but <laughs> for different reasons. Uh, yeah. In two thousand two, uh, the Methodist Church has a. Our National Archives Committee and the region, the Western region, uh, decided that they wanted to come to Great Falls. Mm -hmm. And we held it at our church and introduced Brother Van to all of them and took them to the Interpretive Center and did yeah. the things that people who come to Montana Good and job. to Great Falls yeah. mm -hmm. want to do. Yes. Good job and thank you. <laughs> you are welcome. Yeah. But it, was, <laughs> it was before you. <laughs> I can still, still thank you. It laid the groundwork, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but one of the things that we served them dishes, uh, served them our, their dinners on was the dishes that are originally from the church that mm. were before 1939. Oh, my goodness. And they, and they have the Methodist <gasps> Episcopal Church on the dishes. Oh, wow. And these historians just about fainted that we were serving with Food these on dishes these. on these yeah. dishes because and so we've said ever since well we, if we get in dire straits we'll sell our dishes. there you go <laughs> yeah that's your your bailout plan there yeah. so this guy does all this stuff in the state of montana from great falls and all we have is a house he lived in with aj and his wife that, well, yes. So we've been collecting things ever since. because, And that's why we started doing this project is because we were losing the story. Yeah, which he's so influential. There should be more. But I've got to I've got to ask. We're going to go back a little bit. You found a lot of weird stuff in the house. <laughs> right. We know Brother Van is gone uh, in right. the 1919. Did he leave things behind and were they in the house and... Are they on display in the house now today? <clears throat> we found things in boxes, and we also heard stories that apparently a custodian had lived in the house, and they had a room that they locked up, and it had his saddle and a lot oh. of things in it, and apparently the kids got in it, and so there wasn't a lot of things, but still... And we were getting more things all the time. Uh, okay. I have to tell you a 
a fun story. Yeah. <laughs> yes. When, when Sunday at church, um, the pastor called me and she said, I want you to come up front. And I Mm-hmm. Didn't know what was <laughs> why. Oh, yeah. I'm in trouble. Yeah, you're gonna have to sell <laughs> books. Make an example out of you. Yeah, <laughs> during the make the peace uh-huh. section, <laughs> she put this clo- coat over my shoulders, and it was interesting. It was a little big, but not terribly big. And what had happened is that this min- they had been at the annual conference, and this minister's wife had Brother Van's what they call frock coat in her closet for 50 to 60 years (laughs) how and she said i'm going you know i'm downsizing (laughs) what should i do with this and they said we know exactly where it should go and so we have his frock coat the lady that i told you about Velma good she gave she had his hat we have it. How we have these valises. Are you wondering why all of his clothing is scattered across all these women's houses? <laughs> yes. Okay. yes, I am. I'm, ex- I'm wondering like, the how same does, thing. How does Velma have a hat? This lady has, has a, a coat. coat. That's like, right. Wow. What? He just left it behind. He mailed it to them. I have no idea, and I'm not asking any questions. <laughs> I'm telling stories about this, Suzanne. You can guarantee yeah. the stories I... I'm telling are not going to be accurate. There's so many questions. Right. It's like the Mariani incident, why you're there with your secretary in the middle of a field with a video camera mm. and capture something weird. It's it's that kind of level <laughs> of weirdness. Uh, yeah. Wait, where was this woman who had the coat? Where did she live? You know, I don't remember. Okay. But it wasn't in Great Falls. Yeah. It was someplace else, and her name was Cox. Huh. And she, huh. her husband had passed away a number of years ago. And why she had kept that, I don't know. A little secret treasure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so intrigued about what, like, well, and you said you keep, you, you're accumulating more things? Right, we are. Like, I had a man from, re, remember M- M- J.A. Martin? Yes. And his wife was a Lewis from Monte, yes. from Fort Living. Benton. Okay, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. they had, um, I believe it was her brother, was a lawyer. And so he handled all of Brother Van's legal affairs. Okay. And one of the things that Brother Van would do is he would go into a little town like Chinook or uh-huh. or Shoto or Sydney or whatever, and he would buy a lot. Huh. And it would be on Main Street. And it would get more valuable over the years. <laughs> and so... This so this many questions still this about lawyer this man. would would had all of these deeds. Oh they, my gosh. They'd been sold, of course. Yeah. But had all of these deeds. How? How were like? He's just a real estate With, tycoon. Right. What money? Right. Yeah. I he was going to ask, like, what kind of legal con- legal issues does this dude have? Yeah. And now all of a sudden we find out he's a real estate tycoon. Um, but imagine the amount of clothes he's left all over the state. <laughs> well, <laughs> with all I the still, ladies, uh, yeah, everywhere. I still don't understand that. But yeah, huh? wow, that he just gets more fascinating the more you tell us. Oh, oh that's yeah. right. He was fascinating. Yeah. And um, uh, so we, I want to make a non. I want to make <laughs> a. I want to make a movie about this guy. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, I'm it, not based on fact. <laughs> loosely based on some facts. <laughs> I'm going to create my own. It's a wild oh, story. I'm going to write this. Story. Yeah. I'm going to write a screen play mm-hmm. and um, then I'll give it to you and you can correct all the spelling and create <laughs> normal sentences. <laughs> can collaborate here. Perfect. <laughs> Suzanne's going to go, that's not the way that happened. I'm like, hey, that's it's not a real story. <laughs> based, this is fiction. Based on. Truth. Based on. Well, hmm. one of the things, if you read in history... Uh, about Wyoming and Montana, you know that Wyoming had a lot of more, lot many more range wars mm. than Montana did, and likely the reason why could you go in and sit down and pray and sing mm. with your opponent and then go out and kill him. Oh, and wow. so you know, B- Brother Van brought that kind of. Huh. Yeah, that's Sunday why schools and, 
and yeah. that type of thing huh. to the state of Montana. When he got here, there were only three Methodist ministers, oh. and his his circuit was almost the entire state. Yeah. Later on, he was mainly in north central Montana, which is the reason why we celebrate him here. Yeah. Oh, makes right. sense. What, Suzanne, is the most fascinating part about his life to you, or what draws you the most to, to his story? <laughs> Probably something we haven't even heard about yeah. yet. <laughs> 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 I think because he made such a big difference mm -hmm. in the settlement of Montana and that he affected everybody. Yeah. Uh, and he was only able to do that because he was not married mm -hmm. and yeah. he was free to free to go across the state and yeah. he did he traveled all of the time mm -hmm. uh, and he was he had this really loud voice <laughs> and he would sing and i don't know that he was a great <laughs> vocalist okay. but you he don't have could to be sing. you could hear him though <laughs> yeah oh, i have a fun story to tell about that <laughs> <laughs> great when he first got to montana he took vocal lessons no <laughs> <laughs> he should have yeah he started out he needed to, to go to helena be, and and on south because it, that's where most of the people lived down by Virginia City, right. mm -hmm. Helena at the time. And <clears throat> he was on his way and he got to Raidersburg. Do you know oh, where yes. Raidersburg is? I uh -huh. do. <clears throat> and it, the fellow that he had been riding with was going in a different direction. So he just walked into town. <laughs> and he walks into town. This is like out of a, a Western movie. Yeah. And everybody is scurrying to, to the buildings <laughs> to and shutting the doors. Oh and He's probably dressed all in He's black. Not, <laughs> menacing. He looked that menacing. Huh? Well, yeah. he might have been, you know. Yeah, yeah. No. well, yeah. If he yeah. was in his little outfit. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so. He still uh, had his little coat. Yeah. <laughs> before he, he left frock, that at some. Yes. Frock coat. Yeah. yeah. And so he, at first he can't figure out what's going on. And then he sees. Um, gun barrels sticking out the corners oh, of the no. doors and he's thinking I'm about to be shot yeah so what he does is he gets up on a wagon it starts singing that's right <gasps> he starts singing all at once and they oh, realize and of course it's a hymn of some kind yeah, yeah. And they realize that he's not the bandit or the horrible person that they think he might be, oh, that gosh. they've heard about, that this is a different person. So oh. Readersburg was always a very popular place for him. This is amazing. Now, every time I go to Readersburg, I'm You're just going to start up jumping up and singing on the bar. Right. Oh, oh my they, gosh. I think they would love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, every story just... It's so fascinating, this <laughs> man. And also, I want to see this as a movie. Yeah. I'm telling 100%. you, this, this would be, be the fantastic... best movie. Yes. Oh, well, I can't wait oh to just God. dream okay. about this. Of course, you've got to come to visit the Brother Van House. Yes. I was just going to bring us full circle because yeah. the yes. Brother Van House, which was not really a house that he built, no. um, but he lived in for a little while. From 1910 to 1919. Okay. Nine okay. years. So a good nine years. <laughs> And we've got basically a makeshift museum for Brother Van in mm -hmm. this house. Right. And it's now open on yeah, a consistent July basis. Is yes, the it's going time for it, it, right? Right. Yeah. And we received a grant from the uh, Big Sky Country National Heritage Area mm. uh -huh. to keep it open more. And so it will be open from July 5th through August 1st, Tuesday through Fridays oh. from oh, 1 wow. to 4 p.m. Nice. And we will bring you brochures that you can great. pass out. That would yeah. be great. Yeah. So if you're planning your trip, this is the time to plan it yes. and make sure it's during those time. Mm -hmm. Will it just be a self-guided tour? Will no. you be there to start singing when they walk in the door? <laughs> That's right. That should be how you greet people. That's what <laughs> That's Brother Van <laughs> would do. And yeah. Of course it would. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have docents. Uh -huh. We have 
five people who serve as docents. Great. And so um, I probably won't be there, but there will be somebody <laughs> else there who will. I think my day is August 1st, if you want okay. to come on what? my day. <laughs> it's like, but, I'll take one. Uh, yeah. uh, they will be there, and they will tour the house and show them what we have done and the amazing thing is people have given us you know the house was almost empty when we got it and uh interestingly the relatives of brother van has helped us bring this house back oh, oh wow yeah and they are the sons and well great great grandchildren of his brother Fletcher and Samuel mainly. Okay. And they started finding out about it, and I don't know how. Huh. And they would arrive every, every summer. Huh. And then they would start, you know, s- s- contributing. And so we have used that to restore the house because it was in terrible shape. Mm. What are some of the unique features about the house, if anything? I mean, because it was built in the 1900s for AJ yes. for AJ and his wife. One, one of the things that I love about the house, of course, are all the are hardwood floors. Mm, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. And the other thing are pocket doors. Oh. Uh, yeah, they open and shut. And the um, windows are the original windows, and they're oh, wavy. Neat. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. yeah. The warped glass. Yeah. I love that. Right. Uh-huh. right. <laughs> and um, actually, there's three stories. We only show people the first and second story because the third story has um, a fiberglass on the floor and you can oh. get it in your lungs. Uh, and yeah. so we don't show them that. But um, we have in the brother van bedroom and another bedroom. We scraped off something like six layers of paint. It took us oh, several wow. years oh to do goodness. it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And we brought it back to the natural wood, mm. and the floor has been sanded and polished. And we have, and people have given us wonderful pieces of furniture. For instance, we have a, a little child's high chair. Oh. And you adjust it, and it makes it into a stroller. I mean, it is all wooden. Oh, wow. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, I was like, do they make those now? No. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> and then on the second floor, we have a mirror that sits on the floor, and it's a hemming mirror. And the women would be sure hmm. that their hem was straight by mm-hmm. turning around and, and seeing that. Yeah. We have... Uh, two chests that came up on a steamboat. Oh, oh wow! Yeah, neat. Yeah, and um, a, a little girl. We, I was down there this morning, and we we have uh, just now finished a bedroom that's going to be a little girl's bedroom, hmm. and it's all it's really cute. Yeah, huh? Uh, and then through the house, you've got all these cool little pieces of history. Do you also have then stories like in the little girl's room? Will it be about the um, boarding school Crisis, he started yeah. and those type of things? Uh, or We're getting there. Okay. But one of the things that we do have is that on the in the parlor or the living room, we have a series of pictures. And they go, they're on the walls. And one of the pictures, of course, is the the letter that Charlie Russell wrote to Brother Van on his birthday. Oh, cool. They were going to have a birthday party for him, and he invited everybody in the state. And (laughs) Charlie couldn't come because he was on jury duty. Oh, Oh my (laughs) gosh, how funny. That's hilarious. Charlie's like, dang, I hate to miss a good party. You know how I like to have a party. Uh (laughs) Right. That's so funny. So, yeah. and then the dining room, <laughs> we have a series of pictures of the history of the Methodist Church. Uh-huh. But we don't, you know, we don't really emphasize that because it, it depends upon whether the person is interested. Sure, sure. Yeah. Right. And the house is on the National Registry of Historic Places with yeah. the uh, National Park Service. Mm-hmm. It's also a United Methodist Church historic site. Okay. Oh, wow. So, Neat. So people find out about it. Make that a pilgrimage. Way. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. make a pilgrimage. 
That's right. So, wow. folks, if you've got random articles of clothing that used to belong to Brother Van, <laughs> they're willing Send them to their take. way. In yeah. fact, uh, we would love to have them yeah. if you've got them. <laughs> and the story behind You're it. You're going yes. to have to share the nitty-gritty <laughs> yes. details of how this was left behind and to your care. Yes. It's going to also be part of my movie. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, big future for you if you have a piece of clothing. Paul Lynn, who wrote the book brother mm. van montana pioneer is that the one you writer. bought from the church <laughs> sale <laughs> okay. that's right okay that's the one i bought well i got in touch with robert lynn and in that day they didn't have print on demand 1992 things oh. that really changed yeah. over the years right and it turned out he had seven cases oh and oh I, wow i think of 50 books of this book oh my gosh and so they just gave them to us. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> and so nice. we have those for sale. Great. And then we have another one that was made in Montana, and it's called Brother Van by Those Who Knew Him. Oh. And there's an, uh, there's an article, like F- Robert Vaughn wrote one. Yeah. Oh, He's nice. a historian, a pioneer, and, uh, you know, other people w- wrote these stories about... Uh, Knowing Brother Van. I forget all of these people existed at the same time. Right. That's right. They're all That's buddies. Great. Yeah. You know, it's like a one big small town. Yeah. It but was. It's just crazy that I just, I think of them at different points, but no, they all were yeah. hung out. Yeah. So, um, folks, you can't see this, but <laughs> Suzanne's book is tattered and yes. it has got notes and it has <laughs> um, pieces of paper stuck in there mm-hmm. and there's um, sticky notes and leaf that. pages and all that kind of stuff. So tell me in there, the highlights and the notes, are you like correcting for grammar? Are you <laughs> it's like, this isn't quite the way that happened? Or are they notes like follow up on this? There's got to be more of a story here. <laughs> what kind of notes have you kept in this book? Uh, do you know that he researched this book for a number of years? <laughs> and I would say it is authentic. Mm. And so I use it as the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that'll happen when you sit. Yeah. And so there are other books. Uh, there's one by Jesse Smith, and I don't recommend people read it. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good to know. Good yeah. to know. Yeah, that yeah. is good to know. Yeah. And uh, go ahead. The other, the other one you were saying, uh, there's this one and then the one... It, up close or by people who knew him or yes. something what is that one it's called brother van by those who knew him okay and that's and, for sale at the house as well it is okay and they're both 25 dollars. okay each. look at that see i'm real curious now about reading these are you mm-hmm. thinking they'd be good background for our movie yes well yeah <laughs> we definitely need the other one too i think it could be brother van we're no damn experts <laughs> The truest story ever told by people who know, who nothing. know nothing about it. <laughs> I like where you're going with this. We can start a whole series I on that. I think this is going to be great. Well, when we give the tours, we tell people that Brother Van was a little bit like uh, Johnny Appleseed. And the fact that some of the stories are true and some of them probably are not possible. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably the case mm-hmm. for everybody's life. Yeah. Um, but unless it's a story about me, it's 100 probably 100% <laughs> true. Um, so uh, technology-wise, can people buy these books online or get access to them when you aren't open? If someone would call the church, oh. 406-453-31114. Uh, and say that they want a book. They we can make that s- we happen. S- we send it yeah. out to them. Oh, okay. Oh. There you go. So if you want to read up on him before you come, right. you can call ahead for a book. It, yes, you can. And there's yeah. amazing, there's quite a bit of information on the internet about okay. Brother Van. Yeah. I'm just so, I, I'm just fascinated. Do you fascinated. feel slighted in your education? <laughs> well, a little bit because I feel like I... He's so impactful. Like, he's such a character and such a figure in the history, not only of Great Falls, but Montana... And I, uh, yeah, like I said at the beginning of the episode, I shamefully didn't know anything about him. This is why we started a podcast. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> and we got so many more stories about him, too. Like, all your stories were incredible. And the other people, like Leafy Regal and Augusta Eris. That's right. Yeah. Look at you remembering people's I know, I was names. trying to remember. <laughs> Yes, locked them in there. Well, Suzanne, I really appreciate you taking the time to yes. hang out and have fun with us. And 
Um, look forward to my screenplay um, <laughs> probably in the next two years. Yeah. Um, well, I have another question. Is oh. it open beyond August 1st ever? We do special tours. Okay. But we just don't have the personnel. Yeah. Yeah. To, so you to can open. call. So if somebody's visiting after August, they can give you a call and arrange right. a time with you. And okay. They, they do that all of the time. Okay. Great. Great. I'm yeah. done now. Okay. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you again, Suzanne. <laughs> um, and folks, this is just one of the pieces of character mm -hmm. that we have in our community and a uh, unique opportunity. So when you're here, uh, you said July 1st. Uh, when July 5th through August 1st. Oh, okay, lied. Okay. <laughs> After you're done with your 4th of July celebrations, mm, yes. uh, stop by, do the Brother Van House, and then uh, get some other fun stuff done. Yep. I really have enjoyed our time. Yeah. I've loved the stories, and I can't wait to have you back to tell more stories <laughs> about more people in Great Falls. Yes. I would uh, love to do it. And this has been delightful. <laughs> Perfect. And you were yeah. scared. And look at how yeah. good this is. Yeah. And longer than 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so folks, until we see your bright, smiling, happy face here in Great Falls, we hope you are creating amazing memories with your friends and family, wherever you might be. Bye-bye. We are no damn experts as the recorded claims from Great Falls, Montana, covering what you need to know about this amazing damn town. Damn, that felt good.